I got Jane its hand of fate, and this is going to be crazy. <laughs> okay. Now that we got the intro out of the way. <sighs> That's a really great intro, huh? <laughs> well, welcome to Game Devs Play Games, and today we are playing Hand of Fate. Mm -hmm. Hand of Fate. Oh, shit, we didn't look up the Game Devs developer for this one. Uh, it was developed by this these person. people, and uh, published by these people. We never really talk about the publishers. Fine, go but. away. <laughs> Focus up here by these people. There, see? Thank you. Got you something to work with. So many animations, it's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're okay, playing hand of. We're <laughs> <laughs> giving you more oh, work. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so we're playing hand of fate. Uh, uh, how many episodes are we planning on doing? Like yeah, like five ish. Five ish. Five -ish. We'll uh, I mean, this game is going to be super, super long, so I don't foresee us playing yeah. through the entire thing. Unless people, like, really get crazy about it, then yeah. we could talk about that again. Um, but we wanted to show it off, and Kujo here has been studying it. I have never played it, so... It's fun. It's been out for a bit, but it offers uh, something that's not quite done in video games, and I think that's kind of fun. From the little bit that I saw of us playing uh, before we started the episode, I'm actually very intrigued. When I first heard about this game, I was like, yeah, okay, I mean, this sounds fun, card game stuff, and I saw you playing, I was like, wait, this is not at all what I expected. Nope. Um, so let's let's jump in. Okay. So this is, we're starting this from the very beginning, right? Yeah. Like, we just yes, cleared we all of our data. The progress. The card of Final Journey. Ooh. You have passed the 13 gates. And you come to my table to play the game of life and death. Your stake is wagered. I refuse none who come here. Yet, I say, turn back. Okay. Basically, oh, you found the tower. Please step inside. I will reveal my secrets to you. If you play my game. Interesting. Did we just like stumble across this tower? How do one we live? One, one dies. Let us see what you are made of. Okay, so this is how it starts. Here's the Boom. first member huh. of my court. The oh, that's it. So you're trying to take down the members of his court. Which are these cards that show up. Oh, okay. Are they like Enemies that mm -hmm. okay, so we're, we're trust me fighting at them? first at first. It's like oh, it's a it's a it's a card What the fuck is going on? Oh my god. He's magic. Yeah. I got a pair. What do you got? <laughs> Go fish. No, I got a flush. I want the pants off now <laughs> War all right, so here we are Couple things to keep in mind. So Right off the bat the game introduces a couple of things first off health food and gold. Those okay. are the three main things that are consistent throughout the game. Okay. Health. Pretty self-explanatory. You take hits, your health goes down. You go to zero, you die. That's it. Food. Makes sense. Hmm. What does food do? Well, we don't you really know it. yet. Gold? Well, it's money. Money. You probably use it to buy well, stuff. Well, I mean, food, I don't really know what to do. But, hey, it's showing me move for left stick, and then A to select the card. I can look at my inventory, but we haven't really gotten anything there yet, so whatever. Let's move. Oh, that's weird. Now, my do we... food went down by one. Oh, okay. So do we choose any one of those four cards, or, or do it we has to move be on top of... Oh, okay. So we're actually moving that little figurine as if it's mm -hmm. a board. Right. Okay. Now, if you notice, food counter went down by one. So every step requires food. Exactly. Okay. That makes sense. So... Yeah. Yeah. So this is illustrating the first type of conflict you can come across in a card. The Twisted Canyon. You see a wagon glinting in the sunlight, lying next to a skeleton at the bottom of a canyon. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for that. Could you add in the burp? Uh, <laughs> the walls of the canyon are... Uh, cup. Fuck it. You know what? Hey, I have glasses. I... I gave... I was like, walls of the canyon are covered in thick vines, perfect for climbing. Climb down and retrieve the weapon. So, here's how we accomplish things. Okay, so three it's... your successes. Fuck, I already lost it. Is there any way to keep track of it anyway? I well, mean, they all merge in the center, so there's no way to really center, know but, what's what. But it does... It, it continues continuity. If you, see, if you see it all come together and one of those cards goes on top... Then you know it. And then it goes back, card. you know what that card is. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Make your way to the bottom of the canyon. Draw one weapon card. I have an axe. 
Hey, I, I have an attack now. Cool, I guess. Press it to swing. Um, 20 sure. damage, it's so much! <laughs> that will make you much more, much more effective. effective. Alright, so now we have a choice. Which way do we go? Let's go up north. Step. Damn it! I don't want to go to the stairs yet. Don't fall down the Anytime stairs. Anytime you go to stairs, forest, pathway, whatever, it's leading to the next adventure. Oh, okay. But if you turn back, you, you can... You can turn back and continue to go through now, the rest of the Now, can you still level. go back to the stairs? Of course. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Keep in mind, though, you do still only move Man. one square, so your food will continue to go it's, down. It's so weird, because then it sort of is like a randomly generated dungeon, but exactly. all in cards. Exactly. That's, that's a really weird way of doing it. It's like yep. an adventure card game, which yeah. I don't think I've ever really seen. Yeah. Huh. One day in a shady forest, you encounter an elf maiden. She stops to greet you. I am Merith of the forest folk. My people have long... I'm slowly going to Patrick Warburton. My people have long <laughs> helped the mortals of this realm. <laughs> what bird would you ask of me, Peter? <laughs> you do a really good impression Thank of you. that. I, well, Aaron from Grumps does a better one. All right, so... Right off the bat, this is like a, hey, you're at the beginning of your adventure. Would you like some help? Hell yeah. Get so, us some of that life. Longer life, max health. Supplies, food. Fuck gold. Yeah, longer life is longer way better. Longer life. Now, because this is the first thing, you get two max health gain cards. Later uh, on, you'll only get one. Sometimes you might not even come across the maiden. It's interesting. So, plus five. And another plus five. So, now we have 110 out of 110. It is, said, it is said that sharp-eyed adventurers may protect themselves from the worst of Lady Luck's contrary nature. Farewell, mortal. <laughs> I've also watched a lot of Venture Brothers. That'll do it more than anything. Mr. Lion! Never a fan of Lion! Whilst enjoying your evening meal... Whilst enjoying your evening meal at the local town... I'm just gonna read it normal. A strange old man takes the seat next to yours. He taps your shoulder quite painfully with his wooden staff to get your attention, and you notice that he appears to be a goblin, poorly disguised as a human. <laughs> his wizened face grins at you with a hint of madness. My name is Mr. Lionel. If you give me what I need, boy, I will conjure up your heart's desire with this wizarding wand of my own creation. Lionel. He cackles uncontrollably for a few moments. Lionel! <laughs> he cackles uncontrollably for a few moments, then sits patiently waiting for your answer. Bread for your plate. We don't have 20 gold, or we could just ask him. Kill him. <laughs> no. Uh, ask him what he needs. You need? A better I need mustache. Need. I need to help you. What? Mr. Lionel taps his staff on the ground, and a shield materializes at your feet. There you go, old bean. He smiles a warm grin that reveals his chipped and yellowed teeth. Your face reminds me of my son. I haven't met you before, have I? Draw a shield card. What? Now what's weird Why is, is that right there. Why is he being so nice to us? Continue, well, we're at the very beginning. It's showing us I the don't game trust mechanics it. at the start. Get Shields. rid of the shield. <laughs> it's trapped. No, Nick Fury's in control of the shield. I can't do it. Um, don't trust Nick Fury. That no, shit's it's... crazy. Anyway. Shields with this trait allow a hero to reflect projectiles back at the attacker. This might be performed with precise timing as the projectile draws near. Press the weapon with the... Weapons with this trait allow the... Camp. Weapons are still allowed to go to counter their foes' attacks. Look for the grand attack. Okay. okay, we have a shield. Yay! Yeah! And before you can stop him with inhuman speed, he snatches a pickled onion off of your plate and sprints out the tavern door. Oh, that bitch. I knew he was up to trouble. That bastard. <laughs> that batch. Batch. My pickle! <laughs> Oh, uh, quick, you you did Lion no earlier. Lion there There is actually a clip of outtakes from Thundercats on YouTube. Where it's like, Lionel, we need <laughs> And the like, voice actor who voices Lionel was like, What's wrong, Snarf? <laughs> <laughs> we beautiful. need to get that blasted Samo flange. Yeah, I don't know. The fuck's a Samo flange? I messed that up. We need to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> you embark on the next leg of your adventure. That's beautiful. I love outtakes. Oh, yeah. It's too bad we don't have outtakes. It's all in the intakes. Dead man's gorge. Your opponent waits here for you to find him. Aw, oh, dang. While crossing the ancient rope bridges of Dead Man's Gorge, you hear sounds of movement from below. It's an ambush. Draw one monster card. Two of dust. Aw, oh, dust. Now, here's the super cool part about this game. Okay. I think this is awesome. 
and you can skip this if you want. I don't know why you would. Yes, it... Whoa! Whoa! So, shield, axe. Whoa! Your, what is... Your computer hates us. What is happening right now? Oh, well... Oh, no. Did it break? I think it broke. Oh, it broke. When you see the flashing indicator. It broke. Oh... We're gonna pause and fix this. Okay, yeah. All right. We're back. This is how it's supposed to look. That All was right. super weird. So, right there, right in that little intro, it gives you all of your equipment that you've picked up, mm -hmm. and right before you start the battle, it refreshes you on the controls, because sometimes you'll be spending so much time with the cards that you'll forget how to play. Mind you, I really do only think that that's only for this like beginning leg. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, obviously, you'll know what you'll be doing. All right, so it does have a pretty simple combat system, a la Batman Arkham Asylum, uh, Shadow of Mordor sort of situation. However, as you unlock weapons throughout the game, they'll, they'll have special abilities. Some of them will do triple damage if you have a stunned enemy, or, or some of them will increase Whoa. your attack speed. Some of them are going to be heavier weapons, so you're going to be slower, but attack um, with more power, you do more damage mm. and such like that. There's a lot of versatility with this game. Now, you recover what you can from the dead. Dealer draws you. Dealer draws you three gain cards. One equipment. I'm sure you agree. Which is a sword. Twenty-three. Nice. Uh, but however, we do have an axe which is twenty-five. So oh, I, thought the axe I will 20. not equip this right now. But it does go into our inventory. Can we sell it? We can sell it. Yeah. Or. If goblins show up, they can take an item of yours. Oh, okay, so it's actually kind of nice to have an extra exactly. store of stuff. Gain three food. So, you mentioned that we could skip those action sequences? What Not the happens? action sequences, just the animation of the cards dropping down with the equipment that you pick up. Okay, okay. Yeah. That, that's good, actually. I was going to yeah. say, if you could skip those action sequences, then what's the... What's the point? What's either the point, or what's the consequence or benefit of skipping? Right. Ah, a traveling mage. It's our first shop. In a shady grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Mages only sell specific items that they've discovered in faraway lands. Their prices can be high, but they also pay well for anything that catches their interest. Approach the shop, me as well. Hell yeah, we're gonna get us some magic. Uh, I need a, um... Greetings, wise traveler. I have much to offer you. Where have you heard I? of the legend of Diablo? <laughs> or perhaps you've heard of the Arkham Knight, the, the Batman. We're starting to get into the meat of the game now. The back and right. forth between resources so. and rewards. Oh, yeah. oh so we can buy sell stuff. Yeah. Buy items. Basically, this can reveal some of the other things. During combat, press the right bumper to throw knives in eight cardinal directions. So these are like quote unquote spells you can pick up. Oh. Basically, it's like an added function. Okay. Plunderer's cap. When you draw supplies, start draw two and pick one. Hmm. Hernie's antlers. Lizard men take double damage from the player's attacks. Or hag's wraps. Each strike inflicts a curse, slowing and weakening your opponent. So I really like, by the way, that those cards are flipped upside down before mm -hmm. you navigate to them. Um, actually, the reason why that's really good design is actually a surprise and wonderment thing. Um, and a lot of game designers kind of disregard this as arbitrary, but um, with a game like this, I think it's especially important to include. So we don't know what those cards are until we, s we scroll over them. It gives mm -hmm. us a reason to always scroll over them, mm -hmm. um, unless we don't plan on buying anything, but then why are we here? Yeah. Um, I always... It's always that little bit of like a, the the curious part of your mind where it's like I wonder right. what they're gonna it's, sell. I may as well go look. It's 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 like an added anticipation thing, which mm -hmm. is actually really good design because when it's revealed, if it's something really good, it makes it that much more satisfying. Mm -hmm. We can't just identify it immediately from looking at it. Right. Um, so no, that's I think that's really clever of them to do it that, and it's so subtle, but it makes a, a big difference as you you're playing the game for a long time. Right. Maybe it'll get annoying after a, a while, but I, I still think I like that more than anything. Well, here's the thing. Um, the whole getting annoying thing, because mm -hmm. I like, go, oh, it's the same stuff. That is not the case with this game. Hmm. And I will explain why once we get out to our target. A winding trail. <laughs> Suddenly a tree falls across your path, blocking the way ahead. The dealer draws you one monster card. Three of dust. 
Weapons bristle from the trees around you, their wielders' faces obscured by the undergrowth. Give us all your go to die. It's a very fable it's, accent. Yeah. <laughs> Five gold. Are oh, you a Atta chicken chaser? <laughs> Attack the cowardly band for daring to threaten you. You shout a battle cry and raise your weapon. The battle begins. The battle begins. The battle begins. <laughs> the battle begins. Beyond the physical. Prepare thyself. What we'll do, at least for this beginning thing, we'll let it go. We'll let this little animation play because I think it's fantastic. I think it's one of the coolest things you can do. Except it breaks sometimes. No, your computer just sucks. No, I don't think it was the computer. I think it could have just been a weird configuration issue. Yeah. Yeah. It could have honestly been caused from us resetting the data on your, your profile. Oh. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's probably one of the... Hopefully it's just one of those scenarios where it's like, uh, it's... Not something that was heavily tested during development because it's an edge case. Right. And it, you know, it takes a lot of time to find all those little bugs. Now, one little thing I do have a minor, not like issue with, but like one thing that I felt could have made this game have a little bit more depth is that you automatically start as this human male adventure guy. Yes. You have a, a rusty axe and that's it. Like... I think it would have been kind of cool if, in, a, in like a sort of expansion sort of situation, you have access to classes or different um, beginnings where your starting equipment could change. Maybe you only use a specific type of weapon. Maybe you can only use specific type of spells, giving the game a much different twist as you play through as a different class. That would be my only thing. I, I agree. I think that would make things really interesting. I think... Probably I'm also dis- or no, not probably, but I am a little disappointed that there isn't a little bit of, like, character customization. Right. Um, because presumably it's supposed to be us, right? Right. Um, so, like, why can't I play as a female? Right. That's like, That was, like, forefront in my mind. I was like, what if I wanted to play as a girl? Right, like, I don't necessarily care about, oh, I need to have this hairstyle. Yeah. Um, but, like, I don't know. Little things like... Why not just make a female character model? It's not that hard. Right. Why not, you know, have different textures for skin color? It's it's not that hard. Right. Like, um, it, and it seems so little, maybe, like, while you're developing this game, maybe you just don't think of it. But it's it, it offers a lot more of a personal connection to the character you're playing. It's not even just know? personal connection, but it, it feels like... Um, more like it's welcoming all kinds of players, right. not just the average white male. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, I, I'm, that's the, like, feminist slash, like, hipster in equal me speaking. Equal opportunity. Equal opportunity slash hipster in me speaking. But, like, ah. it's, it's good. It's good to have. Um, so, I, I mean, I'll always push for it in games. Yeah. All right, so a new mechanic is introduced with this first boss. You see how that little thing goes red? It's an unblockable attack, mm -hmm. and it hurts like a bitch. So now it just turns into the same sort of puzzled sequence fighter that uh, Batman Arkham Asylum and all that did. Oh, God. Don't die, Cujo. Is this the the boss? This is, this is one of our targets, yes. Okay. Yeah. Stun you, bitch. So basically when we kill him, is the tutorial done? Uh, yes. The tutorial sort of continues at least into the next one, if only for what happens before you start the next leg of the adventure. Oh. Earlier you mentioned that, like, sometimes um, when you're at the shop, flipping over the cards can get monotonous because it's going to be something you've already seen before. Thing is, right before we started this, the, the dealer had three tokens floating in the air. Those three tokens right there. If you finish with a lot of those tokens... They unlock more cards that could be encounters, it could be equipment, it could be random ambushes, it could be r totally random stuff. But this is what they do. Boom. You unlock all these cards. Oh, wow. So we get the Jack of the jack of Skulls, which is our next target. You get the Dead King's Hall. You get all these other encounter cards that he can pull uh, as you're going through that chapter. Next, when you unlock this one... It unlocks equipment cards. Oh, that's cool. Medium armor, uh, chains of rage. And there's no, is. there's no way to actually see what these cards do. Not yet. No, you oh, haven't come across them yet. It's a little disappointing, but at the same time, 
Design-wise, it still is probably smart so that players aren't just sitting there on that screen staring yeah. at what each card does well, for a long actually, time. actually, there is a point just after this where you can look at all the stuff that you have unlocked and what it specifically does. Okay, Before but you it, can do it that. takes that extra step to get oh, there and actually decide, hey, I want to sit here and actually read these for a while. Right. Now, real quick, before we end the episode, we're going to go into that part. So, here is where you pick your target. This is where you pick... Hmm. The, the member of the court that you're going after. So, we're going after the Jack of Skulls next. Um, the challenge is, right now, is that it's, we're going to come across three cards that have two of skulls on them, two skeletons, mm -hmm. but we're also going to run across three cards that have supplies, basically, mm -hmm. offering our food. Like, giving us a bit of a, a something to look forward to. This is where things get interesting. Would you like to oh, use a recommended equipment? Right now, I'm going to say yes, because we don't really have access to a lot, but this is where we can look at... Okay, so... Up here are all the weapon cards that are not in the deck on the table. These are the ones that are. We have 12 slots, so this is like, okay, we have to really figure out what ones we want to put in there. Like as And as you unlock more weapons, the customization for your deck really does kind of change up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's for the equipment. This is difficulty. I mean, wild card update for Hand of Fate. This update adds different fates that you can select in order to change the way the game plays. Each fate provides different modifiers to play. So, right now, it's just standard. Mm -hmm. There's no upgrades, there's no downgrades, anything. If we go to Apprentice, you become stronger in combat. The enemies are weaker. Limited achievements, though, because it's you're playing in easy mode. Right. Um, the deck changes. Apprentice 1, inexperienced in war. You seek out a place to learn. Oh, so these are these are literal cards that it introduces. Okay, some of those are really really kind of crazy. Um, but anyway, go, we we can choose different. Yeah, it's it's different. Uh, the higher difficulty you get, it completely changes up the game, and it's really fun. These are the encounters that you can come across. Once again, you so can basically you can you, you can configure your deck to have all sorts of different types of things, right? Um, which is really interesting. I like I get that for equipment, but even choosing the types of adventures or encounters, I mean, mm -hmm. um, that's actually really unexpected. Mm -hmm. So it gives you uh, a certain amount of control before going into the dungeon mm -hmm. because you are setting, basically, you're setting the obstacle and the difficulty for this next dungeon you're about to go into. Yeah, but I imagine there's a certain level of balance that also oh, is, is put into account with each of those cards to make sure that you can't just, like, choose the absolute easiest build and even though you're on the hardest difficulty, you right. know? All right, but that is, right now, the basics of the game. Uh, in the next episode, we'll show you even more. Aw, oh, dang! What? Well, thank you for watching, and we will see you in the archives. <laughs> Nice fart gun. <laughs> oh. 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 God, it's like Play-Doh. Oh god, the cheeks are flapping against each other. <laughs> that's like, that's like stomach flu level fart. <laughs> no, but the microphone's over here.